So this morning we are going to figure out if the Messiah was born on December the 25th or on some other day. But before we get started, let's have a look at this. Now I've been on this YouTube channel for seven years now, been warning everyone that the Messianic era is here and that the time of Israel's redemption is near and that also the time of the tribulation upon the Gentiles is about to begin. Now, I want to play you this video real quick and you will see right here on a, a Hindustan Times uh, video posted this Turkish MP suffers heart attack and he dies after, quote, unquote, Israel will suffer at last wrath speech. Allah'ın gazabından kurtulamayacaksınız. Hepinizi saygıyla selamlıyorum. All right, I think we've seen enough. So what this should tell you is that somebody has had enough of the Israel slander. And I would say to the folks in uh, Moscow at the Kremlin and the folks in Washington, D.C. and the folks in Brussels and all the other uh, main locations in the world, capitals of the world, that is a message you better watch your mouth. Now let's get started. So, you want to know when, what the birthday of the Messiah is, do you? Let's get started in Luke 1. And is his name Jesus? Well, we're going to find out that King James Version lied to you because his name is not Jesus. The name he was given was never Jesus and shall never ever be Jesus. So, the, one of the first things you see in the sixth month. What sixth month? What do you mean by that? Well, let's look at the Hebrew calendar. Now, Eight, uh, Nisan is the first month, first month of the religious Hebrew calendar. So that's month number one. This is month number two, month number three, four, five, and six, which would be the month of Elu. I'll read a little bit more. Okay. Gabriel, 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 was sent from not God, but Elohim, or Jehovah Elohim, unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused a man whose name was not Joseph, but Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Miriam, not Mary. And the messenger came unto her and said, Rejoice, be glad, not hail. 
You are highly favored. Jehovah is with you, is with you. Not shall be with you, not was with you, is with you. On the sixth day of the Hebrew calendar, I mean on the sixth month of the Hebrew calendar, is with you. You are blessed among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of greeting this should be. And the messenger said unto her, Fear not, Miriam, for you have found favor with Elohim. And behold, you not shall conceive. You are conceived. You have collected in your womb, and you shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name. Does it say Jesus in Hebrew? No, it does not. Yehoshua is the name, and it comes from the Hebrew in, look what we have here, Yehoshua. You see what King James Version did? King James Version lied to all of us. Okay? <clears throat> Yehoshua. What does that name mean? It doesn't mean the Lord is salvation. It means Yehovah is salvation. You see, you have partially Yehovah. And then the other partial, Hoshua. Hoshua and Yeshua both mean salvation. So it means both Yehovah's salvation and Yehovah is salvation. Any other name that does not contain that particular um, Hebrew word structure is not his name. He shall be great and shall be called son of the highest and Jehovah Elohim shall give him the throne of Rome? No, the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now, let us, um, I'm not sure. Did I get scriptures mixed up here? But anyway, what I wanted to do next is, then we shall count from the month of Elul, nine months. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That would be the month of Sivan. So let us look at what holy day is in the month of Sivan. It is Shavuot. And that, folks is the closest you can get to an actual birthday for the Messiah. So the Christians got it wrong. The pagans got it wrong. The Messianics got it wrong. They all got it wrong. But look what I just showed you. Look how easy it was to find it. So why is everybody getting this wrong? What's going on here? Is it deliberate? You tell me. It corresponds with the receiving of the Torah to the children of Israel on Mount Sinai. Shavuot is con commemorated in Israel on the sixth day of the month and on the sixth and seventh days of Jewish dis diaspora. 
All right. Now. So who then was born on December the 25th? I will show you. It was Sol Invictus. This is on Wikipedia, folks. You can see it. The Invincible Sun or the Unconquered Sun was the official sun god. Now, watch what I'm about to do, folks. Just, just bear with me. I will get there. Of the late Roman Empire. So this is a Roman idol. Or later, a version of the god Sol, the emperor Aurelian, a Aurelian, revived his cult in A.D. 274 and promoted Sol Invictus as the chief god of the empire. The main festival dedicated to him was Dies Natalis Solis Invicti, birthday of the invincible sun on December 25th, the date of the winter solist solstice in the Roman calendar from a Euralian forward onward, Sol was supreme importance and often appeared in the imperial coinage. He was often shown wearing a sun crown, and the sun crown you will see on um, the old Colossus and the new Colossus. And I will explain to you the old Colossus, Helios, who is also a Polyon. Okay? Driving a horse-drawn chariot through the sky, his prominence lasted until Emperor Constantine converted to Christianity, so on and so forth. Okay, Invictus was an epithet utilized for several Roman de deities, including Jupiter. Jupiter being Satan himself. And for those of you who do not realize this, that is the abomination of desolation that... What's his name? Uh, Caligula forced in the temple in Jerusalem and in all the other synagogues around the Roman realm of he himself as Jupiter. And Antiochus IV did the same thing. Uh, what is it? One or two centuries before. So this Invictus title includes Jupiter, Mars, Hercules, Apollo, or Apollyon, and Sylvanus. All right? Now, that's... So, Constantine, the first Christian emperor, Portray Sol Invictus in their official coinage with a wide range of legends, only a few of which incorporate the epithet Invictus, such as the legend Soli Invicto Comiti, claiming the unconquered son as a companion to the emperor. Used with particular frequency by Constantine. Constantine decreed on March 7, 321, the day of the sun, Sunday, as the Roman day of rest. And what do you Sunday keepers do? You honor the great pagan himself, Constantine. All right. Now we scroll down to Christianity. A widely held theory is that the church chose December 25th as Jesus Christ's birthday to appropriate the festival of Sol Invictus's birthday held on the same date, saying our Lord also is born in the month of December. Well, well, well. And you see, I just proved to you that the real Moshiach was born on the Hebrew calendar month of Sivan. Once again, Hercules. 
very likely on Shavuot. The same day that the Gentiles call Pentecost, where the congregation of Jews who came from around the world, speaking all different languages, and first received the Ruach Kodesh. Okay? Now, who is Baal? In the Bible, Baal rendered... uh, Render Baal was an important Canaanite idol, often portrayed as a primary enemy of the Hebrew Elohim, not Yahweh, but Jehovah. So Baal is the enemy. What am I getting at? Just, just bear with me. Okay. So you have all these solar so-called deities around the world, right? Where is the... Did I miss something? Surely not. Okay. All right, I'll just read it, and I might pick it up. Pick up what I was looking at. It was also used to refer to various deities of the Levant. Many of the biblical references uh, designate local deities identified with specific places, about whom little is known. But in the Bible, the term is more frequently associated with the major deity of the Canaanite pantheon, being the son of the chief god El and his consort Ashura. In some sources, he is a son of uh, Dagon, and with El being a more distant ancestor, and Asher is not always portrayed as his mother. He is thought by many scholars to be a Canaanite version of the Babylonian god Marduk, and identical with the Assyrian deity Hadad. In Canaanite lore, he was the ruler of heaven as well as the god of the sun, rain, thunder, fertility, uh, activity. Worship of this deity was prevalent in Canaan from ancient times prior to Israelite exodus from Egypt until well after the Babylonian exile in the 6th century BCE. Such worship was violently opposed by the biblical prophets and several of the kings of Yehuda who believed it was Jehovah's will that Canaanite religion be eliminated from Judea, from Judah and Israel. Okay. Several deities bore the title Baal, which means Lord. And every time you folks say Lord, that's what you mean. And more than one goddess bore the title Baalit, Lady. Biblical References to this title associated with various places, including Baal Hazor, Baal Hermon, Baal Hayon, Baal Peor, etc., etc., etc. Okay. Now. In the 38 year, I, 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 I really have missed something here. Um, because Baal is associated with Apollyon. I read it. No, it was, it was back further here somehow. Did I completely miss it? It was in, um, I think it was up here. Okay. So 
So, so what I'm saying to you is that the sun god, Baal, and soul, born on December the 25th, this is what Christians worship today. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you what happened to ancient Israel when they worshipped this same false idol. First Kings 16, 29, in the 30 and, eight, 30 and 8th year of Asa, king of Yehuda, began Ahab, the son of Omri, to reign over Israel. So Israel and Yehuda were divided at that time. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel and Samaria 22 years. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of not the Lord, but Jehovah. You see that? Look carefully. Above all the kings that were before him, and it came to pass that it, it was a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. He took a wife by the name of Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Sidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, where he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke Jehovah Elohim of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. And in his days did Chael, the Beth, Letite build Jericho, and he laid the foundations thereof in Abiram, his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof in his youngest son, Zegub, according to the word of Jehovah, which he spoke to Yehoshua, not Joshua, but Yehoshua, son of Nun, or Yehoshua ben Nun. Okay? Now, Aliyah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As Jehovah Elohim of Israel lives, before whom I stand. Now, you need to remember this statement, before whom I stand, because I'm going to bring it up very shortly. There shall be no dew, no rain for these years, but according to my word. And the word of Jehovah came unto him, saying, Get out of here, and turn toward the east. He was, uh, he was already living in Gilead, which was the eastern part of Israel, on the, other, on the other side of the Jordan River, and hide yourself by the brook Kareth. That is, before Jordan. And um, it shall be, uh, you shall drink of the brook as I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of Jehovah. Now, fast forward. And it came to pass after many days. How many days? Well, there is a scripture, I might not get to it today, but it says three and a half years. And Yohanan, I believe it was, wrote about it. That the word of Jehovah came to Elia in the third year. It was not in the third year, it was after three and a half years. Okay? So... It was not in the third year as we English people say it. It was in the third year as the Hebrews say it. Go show yourself to Ahab and I will send rain upon the land. Why is this important? Let me explain. Because you see, he did this to Israel because they were worshiping the sun god. So that in the latter days, he will do it to the Gentiles for worshiping the sun god. 
And Elio went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a horrible famine in Samaria. Can you imagine how many people died of this famine? And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared Jehovah greatly, for it was so when Jezebel cut down the prophets of Jehovah, killed them, that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them bread and water. And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go unto all the land and all the fountains of the water and unto all the brooks peradventure we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive, that we lose not the beasts. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout. And Ahab went one way by himself and Obadiah went another way. And as Obadiah went the way, was in the way, behold, Elijah met him and knew him, and he fell on his face and said, Are you that Adon Elijah? And he answered him and said, I am. Now go and tell your master Adon, behold, Elijah is here. And he said, Have I sinned that you would deliver your servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me? And so Elijah says once again, as Jehovah lives, there is no nation or a kingdom where uh, Adon has not sent to seek you. And when they said, in other words, what he was saying is, Ahab sent Obadiah to all the nations round about to look for Elijah. And he took an oath to the kingdom and to the nation that they found you not. And now you say, go tell your Adon, behold, Elijah is here. Away from me, that the spirit, that the uh, Ruach of Jehovah shall carry you where I do not know. So he's afraid that Elijah is going to disappear and he will not be able to tell uh, and he will not be able to find him and then he's going to go and tell Ahab that he found him and then then when they go look for him he cannot find him and then Ahab will slay him but your servant fear Jehovah from my youth was it not that when I when Jezebel slew the prophets of Jehovah that I hid a hundred men of Jehovah's prophets by fifty in a cave, and fed them with bread and water. And now you say, Go and tell Ahab, Behold, Elijah is here, and he will slay me. And Elijah said, As Jehovah of hosts lives, before whom I stand. Here we go again with that statement. This statement is a sign. and You need to pay attention. Write it down on paper or in your brain. I will surely show myself today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Aaliyah. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Aaliyah that Ahab said unto him, Are you troubling Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house, you have forsaken the commandments of Jehovah, and you have followed Baal. Now therefore send and gather me all Israel unto Mount Carmel. Now listen very carefully. Aaliyah demanded that all Israel be gathered from the four corners of the land of Israel to Mount Carmel. Okay? Now this is something that the two witnesses are going to do. The two witnesses are going to bring three and a half years of no rain upon the earth. Okay? A lot of people are going to die of starvation. And they will demand that the nations of the earth bring all Israel to not Mount, Car not Mount Carmel, but to Mount Zion. And the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400 who eat at Jezebel's table. So all the false prophets will have to be brought as well. So Ahab sent 
unto all the children of Israel, and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people, said, How long do you halt between two opinions? If, not the Lord, if Jehovah be Elohim, follow him, but if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered not a word. And then Elijah said unto the people, I am the only prophet of Jehovah, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let themselves... Let them therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it into pieces. Let's scroll down. And after the priest of Baal, Baal, did all their hollering, they could not get fire to come down from the sky and burn up the sacrifice and and at noon Elia mocked them and said shout loud for he is a is a Elohim is a God either he is talking or he is chasing or he is in a journey or maybe he sleeps and must be awakened and they cried aloud and cut themselves after the manner with knives and lancets until blood gushed out of them. And it came to pass, and midday was past. They prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, and there was neither voice nor any to answer, nor that any would even listen. And Elias said unto the people, Come near to me. And all the people came unto him, and he repaired the altar of Jehovah that was broken down. And Elias took twelve stones, According to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob. See, this is what the two witnesses are going to do. Bring back all of the stones of Jacob together in the Holy Land. During the great plague of no rain. And I will get to that scripture. Unto whom the word of Jehovah came, saying, Israel is your name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of, not the Lord, not in the name of Jesus, but the name of Jehovah. And he made a trench about the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order, and cut the bullock in pieces, and laid them on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels of water, pour it in the burnt, on the burnt sacrifice on the wood. And he said, Do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, Do it a third time. And they did it a third time. And the water ran around the altar, and he filled the trench also with water came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Aliyah the prophet came near and said, Jehovah, Elohim of Abraham, Yitzhak, and of Israel, let it be known here to this day, you are the Elohim in Israel, and I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. I testify, Jehovah, testify. That this people may know that you are Jehovah Elohim and that you have returned their heart back again. And then the fire of Jehovah fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the uh, water that was in the trench. And when the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, Not the Lord, but Jehovah is Elohim, Jehovah is Elohim. And then Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And he took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. And that's when rain in abundance was sent. Now, Revelation 11. And there was given me, Yohanan, a reed like unto a rod, and this was before the temple was destroyed. And the messenger stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of Jehovah and the altar of them that worship therein, but the court which is outside the temple, throw it out, cast it out. And measure it not, for it is 
given to the Gentiles, and they will tread down the holy city for 42 months. And that's exactly what Titus did by the order of Vespasian in 70 AD. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred three score days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the Elohim of the earth. Did you get it? Did you get it? Elias said, Jehovah of the earth before whom I stand. And the, that means these two olive trees and two lampstands standing before the Elohim of the earth will do the work of Aliyah and Moshe. And Aliyah the plague of no rain. And if any man will hurt them, now remember, they shall prophesy 203 score, uh, 1,203 score days clothed in sackcloth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth, or they will call fire down from heaven as Aaliyah the prophet did. When, uh, what was it, uh, the king before him or the king after him? I can't remember which one it was. I think it was the king after uh, Ahab. I'm not sure which one it was, but uh, sent um, a captain of 50. And he said to Aaliyah, who was standing on the mountain, Come down from here. And uh, he, you know, he said, Man of Elohim, come down from here. And Aaliyah said, If I be a man of Aaliyah, let fire come down and devour you and the 50 with you. And fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies. And if any man shall hurt them, he must be in this manner be killed. These have the power to shut the sky so it rain not in the days of their prophecy. What is the days of their prophecy? 1,203 score days. So 1,260 days is three and a half years for the 42 months in retaliation for the 42 months that the Gentiles trampled, burned Jerusalem in 70 A.D. And he must be in this man. They have the power to shut the sky that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have the pow powers over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And I'm here to tell you, and in Isaiah 66, if you read it carefully, you will see there will be fugitives that will be sent to all the strong nations of the earth to see Jehovah's glory, and those fugitives will bring back all Israel. Okay? Now, this Apollyon, let's see, um, is also known as Helios, okay? Some scholars, modern scholars, have proposed that Moloch may be the same god as Milcom, and yes, that's correct, or an epithet for Baal. 
So you Christians for so long have been accusing the Jews of worshiping Molech when it's you that have been doing it all along. And so, since Baal is associated with Molech, and Helios, let me show you who Helios is. The What is it? The Colossus? Colossus of Rhodes. Was that it? Is this it? There it is, right there. The Colossus of Rhodes. Okay, there you have it, right? Now watch this. What is the new Colossus? Hmm? Any idea? There you have it, folks. The new Colossus, the Statue of Liberty. And there you have it. So like it or not, like the truth or not, you Christians worship Baal, and you will suffer, therefore, three and a half years of no rain. And I must also go to one more passage, and that would be, Daniel 12. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which stands for the children of your people. And there shall be a time of distress, adversary, distress, straits and distress. It does not say such as never was since there was a nation to that same time. And that time, okay, uh, uh, okay. So it does. Here's what it does say: There shall be a time of distress on the going. So such as never was since there was a nation. That is a lie. And that is the reason why you Gentiles still believe that a tribulation is coming upon Israel. No, it's coming upon you, on the Gentiles. And at that time, at that time. Your people, Daniel, shall be delivered. Okay? And if you would have bothered to read Romans 11, Romans 11, and I covered this in a previous video. He's speaking to the Romans, for I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits. That partial blindness happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come. Okay, what does that mean? That means the hourglass of the Gentiles is full. That means their time is up. And so... All Israel shall be saved, because it is written, There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, who will turn away unrighteousness from Jacob, because this is my covenant with them, when I shall take away their sins. Concerning the, the good news, they are enemies for your sakes, but concerning the election, Isaiah 46 and verse 4 and 5, I believe that's correct. Israel, my elect. They are the beloved for the patriarch's sakes. Because the gifts and calling of Jehovah cannot be changed. Okay? Now, if this man here falls to his death after claiming that Allah is going to do something that Israel is going to suffer Allah's wrath, then that means that somebody has had it up to his eyeballs with 
the foolishness of the Gentiles. And you Christians are not going to be treated any different than this when that time comes. So you better beware and be careful what you say. And you had better learn that what you are doing on December the 25th cost the lives of 450 priests of Baal and the prophets of Jehovah will come after your preachers the same way and you will suffer three and a half years of not only no rain but every sort of plague as the two witnesses choose to bring upon you. 